Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? Today, I'm, tr- I'm going to try to be short. Ha, 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 ha. Did I hear Did someone I hear say someone yay? Say yay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Turn, with, turn your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 16. I'm going to read from two translations today. Um, and, and this is really just our main passage for today. Uh, so this is Paul writing to the Philippian church. It says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Reading from the Passion Translation says, I admit, this is Paul the Apostle saying, I admit that I have not yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion. Say, run with passion. Into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. Love that. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. Father, we thank you for your word. Make your word come alive in the power of your Holy Spirit to align our lives according to your truth, that we may walk out and live out our lives according to your will and ways. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This, is, this passage is extra, is, is extra special to me because this weekend on Canada Day itself, my family and I, uh, we celebrated our ninth year of landing here in Canada. Yes, we decided we we're going to arrive in Canada so that when we arrive, there are fireworks. <laughs> we are welcomed with a parade. And so we, we arrived on Canada Day and true enough, there were fireworks. It's like whole Canada celebrated our arrival, but anyway, it was Canada Day. So we, we celebrated our ninth year, but the last message that we had preached in the church where we had uh, grew up, where I grew up with before moving here to Canada, this was the message that God had given me to share to the church. We, Pastor Knapp and I had to share with our church family before we left. And so this passage is very, very dear to me because this was really a, a huge confirmation with God for me. You see, for some of you may not know, we were pastors for a long time in the Philippines. And I, I, we, I became a pastor in the church where I grew up as a Sunday school kid. So, you know, kind of like Christine as a Sunday school kid. And now she's preaching. I don't know if she's going to be a pastor, but who knows? But, but so, so I, you know, and that was like my, my home church. And so this passage, I thought we were going to stay in the Philippines for forever. We thought we were called to the Philippines forever. And then God begins to give us a detour. God sends us to Canada. I studied European languages and never French because because I thought I was going to go to Russia or Germany. But who would have known? I'd be here in Canada and having to speak French to some. Um, But but 
we were sent here to, you know, we received confirmation after confirmation that God was bringing us to Canada. And this word was extra special to us because this was like a huge confirmation. But the reason why I bring, I bring this up is because I feel like God is calling the church to echo the words of the Apostle Paul here in this passage. You see, family, Paul here, the context of this passage is that Paul was in prison. He was not having a vacation. When he says, forget the past, I'm reaching forward. Oh yeah, I got so real. I got my R and R and I'm looking forward to my future because I just got a job promotion right now. I just got, you know, he, he's not having an extra special time that he actually is saying, I'm reaching forward to the goal. I'm forgetting the past. In fact, in the past, Paul the Apostle had a very, very strong, good reputation among his brethren, among the Jews. He was very well known. He was a very eloquent uh, orator. He was a teacher. He was, a, he was mentored by the theologian of all theologians. He had a very good educational background. That was his past. You could actually say that his past was very glorious compared to the situation he was in when he wrote this passage. His past. In his past, he was honored and recognized by religious people. And in the present where he writes this passage, he was under house arrest. He was a prisoner. Here, this is Paul the Apostle who has accomplished so much in his life. And the backdrop of this particular passage is actually found in Acts chapter 28, where Paul the Apostle was, had to be taken together with all the prisoners to Italy for to be tried in court by the Roman courts, in the Roman courts. And so in the middle of their trip, they, they, they faced a storm and they got shipwrecked. And then after the shipwreck, they got swept off into an island called Malta and, and a snake bites Paul. How many of you know the story? A, a venomous snake, not a garter snake, not a Canadian garter snake that's really nice. It's just a little bite, but it won't really hurt you. This is a venomous snake that bit Paul and everyone expected him to drop dead right there and then, but he did not. He just kept going and going. And so a lot of the people on the island thought he was a god. And so they began to listen to Paul, who was one of the prisoners, and the chief on the island named Publius, Publius uh, opened his home for Paul and his fellow prisoners to stay with them. And they, be, they actually were sent off when the weather was nice. They got sent off with a lot of abundant blessings, but still as a prisoner. And here is Paul writing this passage to the Philippian church that this is what I do. I've not acquired. I would have said at that moment, Paul, you are such a martyr. Like you are such a saint, like you've already suffered so much for Jesus. You've, and, and, and you've, you've, you've been shipwrecked. You've preached the gospel. You've planted churches. And yet here is Paul saying, I have not acquired anything yet. I've not arrived. I've not arrived to the goal that God has for me. And Paul having suffered and accomplished much would have been, it would have been easy for him to say, this is it. Like, this is it. I'm done, Lord. Like, I've done enough for you. I've suffered enough. I've accomplished enough. I'm good. But here's Paul saying, this is what I do. One thing I do. I forget the past. I'm straining forward to the goal that Jesus has for me. What are you talking about, Paul? What goal are you talking about? Because you're, you're, you're accomplishing a lot for Jesus already. What goal are you talking about that you're saying you're not done yet? And so today, I want, us, I want to talk to us today about reaching forward, reaching forward. And in the text we read, Paul the Apostle speaks of this heavenly goal that Christ saved him for. You see, family, this heavenly goal is the same heavenly goal that you and I have been saved for. Jesus Christ did not just save you and me. He did not just go on the cross, died on Calvary, just so that we can go to heaven when we die. There is a divine purpose. Remember Pastor Knapp's message, an on guard series uh, on guarding your purpose. How many of you remember that? If you have not heard it, visit our YouTube channel, Champion Life Center Guelph. 
There is a bigger purpose why Jesus got you saved. He did not just save you and me so that our sins can be forgiven. Yes, that's one thing. He wanted our sins to be forgiven so that we can have a relationship with God with no shame and no guilt and no sense of judgment. Because how many of you know that if we are not forgiven, we are full of fear when we come to God? Jesus died on the cross so that we can, our, our sins can be forgiven so that we can have that intimacy with God. But not only that, he has a divine purpose for you and me. And that is, the goal is to look like Jesus, bringing heaven on earth. Look at the person beside you and say, you're starting to look like Jesus. The goal, my friend, is to look, talk, and live like Jesus. To look talk and live like Jesus and if Paul the Apostle who has written a huge percentage of the New Testament said I am NOT there yet how much more us <laughs> amen we're not there yet look at the person beside you you're not there yet I'm not there yet there is a heavenly goal there is a heavenly goal that's bigger than our hashtag goals. There is a heavenly goal that's greater than your personal goal. There is a heavenly goal that is huge and bigger than our career, financial goals, relational goals. And what Paul is teaching us here in this passage is to shift our compelling focus away from our own personal goals to Jesus' heavenly goal. The challenge that this passage presents is whose goal will you have a compelling focus on? Because family, the truth is, if our goals are all tied to earthly matters, at one point in life, we are bound to be disappointed or get complacent or get hopeless or get stuck. Why? Because every goal we have here on earth has an expiry date. Every goal, uh, uh, when, 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 when a single woman blooms and says, I'm ready for marriage, my goal is to get married. You get married, that goal expired. <laughs> that goal's done. What, what is your next goal then? I'll have children. You have children, that goal's done. Yeah, I'll have grandchildren, or I want to work here, you get that job. That's done. Every goal has an expiry date. Every earthly goal is tied to the changes of time. And if we live our lives based on these goals, we will always find ourselves at one point disappointed or feeling empty and, and, and dissatisfied with life. Here is Paul showing us his secret. My secret, friend, is the reason why I stay passionate in life is because I am pursuing a goal that's bigger than any other goal and this goal is heavenly eternal no shipwreck can wreck no no storm can destroy this goal that I'm pursuing will you know is, is being served no matter the circumstances you see family if you have a heavenly goal it is hard to get you disappointed even in a time of a storm or a failure here's Paul saying oh the goal was for me to preach the gospel. I'm a prisoner. Well, then maybe I'm supposed to preach the gospel to my fellow prisoners. Oh, the goal for us was to go to Rome so that I can, I can not just be tried in the Roman courts, but so that I can present the gospel to the Roman officials. Oh, this is not bad for me. This is a blessing in disguise. I am not chained as a prisoner. I'm walking into open doors. See, when you have a heavenly goal, your perspective your perspective about your circumstances completely changes. You're not trapped by the changes of time. You are, you are endued with continuous hope because you know that the goal you're pursuing is not dependent on the economy. Your goal that you're pursuing is not dependent on the human relationships you have. Your goal is dependent on the one who has already conquered both sin and the grave conquered life and and conquered death and, and 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 when we pursue that our lives count no matter how many times we fail here's paul 
saying to us, when all your goals are tied to earthly matters, you'll be bound to constant disappointment. You can't move forward. You can't reach forward when your goals are tied here on earth. Jesus said, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Meaning to say, there is a guarantee that every goal will expire. What happens when these goals expire and you haven't expired? You know what I mean? What happens if all your goals have been accomplished and yet you have not? You're still alive. Are we going to be like others who stop living with tenacity because there's nothing to live for anymore? Will you start settling for survival and stop living because you've lost the courage to pursue a goal? What happens when your expectations are not met and you're not meeting your goal? Will you stop living life with such tenacity and passion because that goal is not being met? Paul reveals to us his secret to staying passionate, not only for Jesus, but passionate in life. You know, you know, zeal, like with enthusiasm. How many, I want to grow old like that. I'm telling you, this year is a milestone for me. Ooh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but this year is a milestone for me. But I am so thankful that the Lord has given me, you know, the opportunity to continue to be passionate for the things of God and anticipating for the promises of God. Let's grow old with the grace of God demonstrated on our faces, not with a disappointment covering our countenance. That's not the point about growing old. Side note, Paul reveals his secret to staying passionate for Jesus despite all the sufferings he endured. You see, we can lose our passion for Jesus when things don't go our way. But Paul shows us how he stayed passionate. He said, my goal is heaven ward in Christ. In other words, as long as I'm still on earth, I have not yet fully obtained my goal of looking perfectly like Jesus. I have not yet completely served like Jesus. I have not yet completely talked like Jesus. I have not yet related with my children, with my spouse, with my coworkers, the way Jesus would relate with them. Not yet. So Lord, I want more of you. Paul is in essence saying, I may get shipwrecked, but the worst thing, the worst case scenario a shipwreck brings is that I become more like Jesus, that I praise him in the shipwreck. The best case scenario is that I get my co-shipwrecked people saved. He saw his suffering as an opportunity, not as a setback, because he had a heavenly goal. And let, ladies and gentlemen, Brothers and sisters, let me tell you today, if you have not yet heard, you have a purpose. God has a heavenly goal for you that's not limited to your circumstance. Truth is, there's more. There's more. Paul, the apostle saying here, my past success in ministry may have taken me far, but it has not yet led me to fully acquire and discover the purpose Christ has for me. In other words, Paul stayed hungry for more. Paul stayed hungry for more. He stayed ravenous for more, not for more success, but for more of Christ in his life. See, family, success does not guarantee Christ likeness. I'm going to say that again. Success does not guarantee Christ-likeness. A, a believer's goal in life ought not to be success. It ought to be that I want to, at the end of my day, at the end of the day, on my last breath, I want to be like Jesus more and more. That is our goal. In fact, when Pastor Knapp and I pray for the church, when we pray for our children, when we pray for our families, we're, we don't pray, Lord, give us a big church. Give us a big mega church. We don't pray for that. We say, Lord, let us be like you. Let our church people become more like you. Let us be like you, that we serve one another like Jesus, that we humble ourselves with one another like Jesus, that we love one another, forgive one another, let go of offenses, and work together in peace like Jesus. Help us to be like Jesus because success does not guarantee Christ-likeness. We tell our kids, and I don't know if they remember this, but we've told them this over dinner, over breakfast, that when you grow up, I don't want you to make success your goal. Don't make success your God. Make honoring God your goal. 
Success is a byproduct of honoring God. If you're successful but not honoring God, I'm sorry, you're not successful. Success is not the goal. Christ's likeness and heaven on earth is the goal, my friend. When you make that your goal, you'll always succeed, even in failure and mistakes. What? Our success in this ministry is not having a big church. It's seeing all of us become more like Jesus. More like Jesus. Not just in character, but also in the demonstration of supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul stayed hungry for more of Jesus. He stayed hungry. Look at the person next to you. Do they look hungry? <laughs> you say, stay hungry. You look hungry. Stay hungry. <laughs> She's almost done. We're about to eat. The Apostle Paul found the secret to stay hungry. Do you know that it's not... It's not a simple thing to stay hungry. Yeah, of course, we all know that. You know, all that is physically talking, right? But it's stay hungry spiritually. To stay hungry spiritually, Paul found the secret to stay hungry for more of Jesus. Family, many years ago in my university days, I stayed at a, ho at a house. We called it back home a uh, boarding house. And I don't know, uh, it's, it's like a residence, uh, but not a dormitory. And... I had my roommates, we had our own bathroom in our, inside our room, we shared a room and I'm so glad that day that my roommates were out when I went to the bathroom and prayed because I love to pray in the bathroom because my roommates won't be able to see me. So bathroom was a holy place for me and I got the throne room right there. <laughs> And, and, and many years ago, I could still recall, in fact, when I was preparing this message, I broke down remembering that moment when I was praying in the bathroom and God suddenly encountered me there on the bathroom while I was kne kneeling on the floor and praying and crying because the presence of God just suddenly hit me. Like I felt God right there in the bathroom. God, you are the God of the bathroom. It's like, you are awesome, Lord. And it's like God just met me there in the bathroom and in that moment, Moment where I had a powerful encounter with God, I felt the Lord asked me, what do you want, happy? You know, kind of like I was taken back to the, to the book of uh, 1 Kings where, where uh, uh, no, sorry, 1, 2 Samuel, where, where Solomon was visited by God and, and, and asked by God, what do you want, Solomon? And I felt like it was a crucial moment to say the right answer. And I remember in the fear of the Lord, in the, such a powerful encounter in the bathroom, my bathroom encounter, I said, Lord, of all the things I could think of, my only response was, Lord, make me hungry for you all the days of my life. Don't ever take away this hunger for you. And in that moment, the Lord began to respond with promises that I am telling you, I wrote down in my journal and I'm seeing it come to pass with my children that they don't know of. And to this day, family, God has honored that prayer. He's always been faithful to remind me of my prayer when my heart gets complacent. Because family, the longer you walk with God, you will be tempted to be complacent. When you've had such powerful encounters in the past, you'll be tempted to say, oh, that was good. Yeah, I had those. Bought the shirt. Got to, went to the encounter. Bought the shirt. Got the, got the wrist. Got the baller. Had my tattoo about that day. When Golden State Warriors played against Boston Celtics on game three. Oh, that was a switch. I remember because this was really like, okay, that's another illustration, Lord. And we were watching the game, game three, and it was held at the Boston Center, right? Yeah. Of course Sam knows. And, and Sam was so upset with the way the Warriors were playing. So sloppy. Oh, we are so sloppy. I'm like, we? Why we? <laughs> He's such a fan. So, you know, he was so upset. And I said to him, I said, Sam, it takes a lot of effort to stay hungry for another championship when you've already won several championships. It takes a lot of effort and intentionality to stay hungry for a victory 
when you've had a lot of victories in your past. And family, a lot of us walk our lives with God the same way, where we, we've had experiences of healing, we've had experiences of provision, miraculous provision, miraculous healing, powerful encounters of our sins being forgiven, and we've remembered those days, and yet they've stayed in the past, and we think, that's it, Lord. But I want you to know today, family, God has more for you in the the days today and in the days ahead God has more for you stay hungry look at the person again stay hungry you see as if the warriors heard what I said that night starting game four their game changed oh I think Sam texted Curry like, bro need to uh, uh, up your hunger <laughs> you see you can be the most skilled team in the nba but if you don't have the tenacity to win a championship you won't get it and in the same way we, you and i can be so knowledgeable in our head we we can have such a rich past of encounters with jesus but if we don't stay hungry for god we we're gonna we're gonna find ourselves losing one battle after another that we thought and assumed we would win pastor knapp likes to say it this way when we prepare for the sports fest get the ball get the ball get the ball get hungry for the ball grab it grab it <laughs> tenacity Bert is laughing. Bert, by the way, is from our Toronto family. And Mylene, thanks for joining us today. They are now part of the Brantford. They're, they just moved to Brantford. So welcome, Bert and Mylene. I want you to know, family, there's more. God has more. It's time to reach forward. There's more of God's love that you and I have yet to experience. If you think you've experienced his love before, think again. There's more. Paul said, I pray that you would be empowered to know how high, how wide, how deep is the love of God. How high, how wide, how deep is the love of God. I don't know about you, but I love swimming and I love snorkeling and I swam with the whale sharks. We swam with the whale sharks and we, we, sw we swim in the deep and it's beautiful in the deep. It's dark from the surface, but when you go down deep, you see, you see so many colors that you never thought existed in the deep because from afar, it looks just dark black. But when you go down deep, the corals are so beautiful. The fish are so beautiful. And, 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 and there's so much more. And whenever I, I have that experience, I'm reminded of that verse. I pray that you would be empowered to know how high, how wide, how deep is the love of God. If you have experienced this love, there's more for you you to experience God's love is deeper than the Marianas trench this is a Sunday school song it's higher than Mount Everest if you have not climbed Mount Everest and you never probably will but if you are going to and you reach the top of Mount Everest congratulations but the love of God is higher than that mountain the love of God is deeper than the trench Oh, Jesus, there is more. Reach forward, stay hungry. There's more of Christ in you. Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's more of Christ in you that needs to be expressed. If your children call you, your mom, you know, they don't call you mama, they call you saint. I'm telling you, there's more of Christ to express, even when you're a saint to your kids. There's more of Christ in you to show to your co-workers. There's more of Christ in you to show to your friends. Reach forward. There's more of God's power that we have yet to manifest. There's more of, there are more marriages and families waiting to experience Christ's ministry of reconciliation. Reach forward forward church there are neighbors around you waiting to hear how much god knows and cares for them reach forward there are friends around you who are suffering quietly in rejection waiting to hear their true value in christ some of them you may see tomorrow when you go back to work 
And they're waiting and waiting. There's more friends that need to hear your story. God's story in your life. We are on a mission. Amen. And the greater mission, here's the secret, is hidden within your jobs. It's hidden within that promotion. That promotion is not just about you getting more salary. That promotion is getting you more opportunities to demonstrate heaven in your workplace. Reach forward. There's more to be done and there's more to discover. We have not arrived. Stay hungry. Your mission is hidden in your breakthroughs because your breakthrough is the blessing that God will use to show those around you how good he is. We are on a mission that is way past our expiry dates. It's way past my expiry date. It's way past anybody's expiry date. There is a goal bigger than this life and it is that goal. It is for that purpose that Christ has gotten a hold of you and me. Reach forward. I don't know about you, but I like to talk to my kids about when I die. <laughs> they already probably have a playlist of the songs I want to be sung when I die. And I said to them, I'm praying that God will really give me time to smile before I die. And so that when you look at my coffin, I know this, is so, this sounds morbid, but when you look at my coffin, you'll see me like, happy all the way <laughs> but one of the things that I really really have in my heart is I want my life to burn so bright for Jesus that when uh, when I pass on my epitaph would read here's the little woman who brought much heaven on earth this is recorded <laughs> remember that on the day I die please <laughs> here's the little woman who brought much heaven on earth and I want that to be your epitaph. Maybe you're not little like me. Hey, here's a gorgeous woman who brought much heaven on earth. Reach forward, my friend. You're not done yet. Your story is not over. Some of you, you think you're just starting small in your business, but God's going to raise you up as an entrepreneur waiting. He's waiting on you. He's training you right now with the small things that you do. And God is going to raise you up as an entrepreneur with a platform to raise up a next generation of entrepreneurs. I felt that in my spirit during worship. And some of you, you were teachers before and you've given up on that. And I felt in my spirit during worship that God, there's someone in this room that was a teacher before and you... You thought you could never be a teacher again here in Canada, and God is going to give you an opportunity to pursue that. Thank you, Jesus. Reach forward, family. If we can't complete it in our lifetime, I pray to God that we would have already equipped our young people enough who are walking behind us so that when we pass on, when we expire, because the goal does not expire, they'd be ready to catch the baton and run with it with all the strength that they have. Reach forward because God has more for us. God is more for you. God wants to raise you up from where you are. Where you are right now is simply a training ground. God has so much more for you and is not just for your blessing, but for the blessing of many people around you. So to end, how do we stay hungry? Are you hungry, church? Yeah, yeah, I, it's about time, Pastor Happy. How do we stay hungry? Number one, quickly, Paul shows us in verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward, straining toward what is ahead. Number one, how do we stay hungry? Forget the past and reach forward. Both success and failure can get you stuck. Both success and failure can get you stuck. Both success and failure can rob you of your faith to believe for the more of God. Success and not failure is actually more dangerous to your spiritual hunger. Nothing fizzles passion more quickly and easily than success. To reach forward displays a focused determination to get something. Paul addresses his walk with God with a posture of focused determination, constant hunger to know Jesus more. When, 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 when things don't go my way, Lord, I want to know you. 
When, when I'm not getting my answers yet to my prayers, I want to know you. When I'm not, when I'm not, when I haven't met my better half yet, I want to know you. So that when my better half meets me, they see Jesus. He was, Paul stayed determined. He was determined not to stay in false satisfaction. He was determined not to celebrate in false finish lines. Paul says in verse 17, My beloved friends, imitate my walk with God and follow all those who walk according to the way of life we modeled for you. So we are commanded to imitate the same hunger that Paul demonstrated in this passage. Number two, how do we stay hungry? So number one, forget what is past. Forget. Forget it. Forget it. Reach forward. By the way, Paul considers forgetting the past and reaching forward one thing. He said, this one thing I do, not two things, one thing. Because you can't move forward if you just forget the past. You have to reach forward as you forget the past. And you can't reach forward if you don't forget the past. So they're one. Number two, press on towards God towards Christ's goal in all your pursuits. Verse 14, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And the word press on is dioko, which means to aggressively chase like a hunter pursuing a catch. Whew. That is the posture of our walk with God. I don't know if you've gone hunting because I have not obvious i probably have been hunted <laughs> but i can run and chase i was so good at playing tag I, and we you know i can chase someone so fast before <laughs> not anymore now but that is a picture of how paul pressed on toward the goal of jesus i chase it like a hunter chasing its its catch there's a catch within the catch when you press on towards Christ's goal in all your pursuits, any form of opposition or resistance will only work for you. If you pursue God's goal in your workplace, no matter the opposition you face, you will see that as an opportunity to fulfill a part of Christ's goal. I'm telling you, I hope you're hearing this. Keep Christ's goal at the forefront and you will learn to leverage resistance to fuel your hunger for more of God. If you have Christ's goal at the forefront, resistance is fuel to your hunger for more of Him. See, the cultural tides that we live in today, where I swim against every day, keep me hungry for more of God to move mightily in revival and reformation in this generation. That's my fuel. The resistance that I face when I share the gospel, that's my fuel to pray more. That's my fuel to believe God for more, to believe the impossible, to speak to the mountains, that the mountains will move. That I, Because the goal is not to get the biggest house. The goal is not to get the most luxurious Lexus. The goal is not to get whatever the, the, many people have goals for. That's not my goal. My goal is heaven on earth, me looking like Jesus. And so when I face difficulty, when I face resistance, when I'm faced in, an, in a relational crisis, rather than point who's right and who's wrong, I say, God, make me like you, Jesus. I forgive. And we, we, I pray that we all would walk our lives before God that way. Use resistance and challenges to, to fuel your hunger. I, I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm almost done. I know you're all, you're all hungry as I keep saying hunger. Well, when I was a kid, um, some of you don't know, I grew up in the island and well, the whole Philippines are islands, is, is a group of islands. So I grew up near the beach and every weekend is a beach time. And I'm, I'm, I'm a really good swimmer, by the way. And, and, and subtle brag, not so subtle brag. But the reason why I could swim long and tread long is because I remember as a kid when I couldn't tread long because of the strong undercurrents in the sea and the waves hitting me, what we would do is we would make it a challenge to stay longer and tr in treading in the deep. And so we kept doing that and we kept doing that until finally I could tread 30 minutes straight with strong undercurrents with huge waves in the sea in the deep because we've strengthened, we use the resistance not to cause us to give up on what we wanted to achieve, but we use the resistance to strengthen our legs so we could do what seemed impossible to our age. 
And that picture is the same with our walk with God. Every resistance, every opposition, every barrier you face, use it to fuel your hunger for more of God in your life. Use the difficulties you encounter. Use the questions you cannot answer to fuel your hunger to know Jesus more. Hunger for more of his wisdom. Hunger for more of his character. Hunger for more of his power. Stay hungry. Reach forward. Lastly, get yourself connected with hungry people. Who's hungry? <laughs> Yay! Get yourself connected with hungry people. And I'm going to use this to say, if you have not joined a life group, join a life group. There is a lot of life groups filled with hungry people. They're always eating every life group meeting. <laughs> Not just eating food, but feasting on God's word, I hope. Verse 15, 16. So let all who are fully mature have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let's all advance together. Not alone. Together to reach this victory prize following one path with one passion. Life group is important. Life group is not just another church program. Life groups act like your hunger station. You feel drained and empty with your walk with God? Go fuel your hunger. Talk with hungry people. People who are hungry for God. You see, testimonies stir up hunger. Testimonies stir up your faith. The hungry dive in and eat when they hear testimonies. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, yes, me too, Lord, me too. Those who are not hungry just want to be entertained. I remember Anna and, Ver and Sam <laughs> when they were little, like really little, one, two, 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 four years old, at the table. And Sam was always hungry before. Not anymore now. Sam was always hungry as a kid. Did, did have, he didn't have any problems eating. He's like, here's your food, boom. Anna, on the other hand, had appetite problems. And we had to entertain her to eat. It's like, oh, here's the airplane. It's going to land in your mouth. Open, open, open. Oh, here's the, oh, look, there's a, um. It's like, oh, look, mama meat and papa meat, they go, they need to, be, oh my goodness, we had to come up with all creative stories just for Anna to eat. Why? Because there was no appetite. There was no hunger. Stay with hungry people because you catch on. Anna was not staying with Sam all the time. And so he, here's, the, here's the secret. When we're not hungry, we want to be entertained. But if we're hungry, we dive into the Word. doesn't matter who's preaching. doesn't matter who's a speaker. You, you're in the Word. Ooh, I want that for me. I need to hear that. I'm hungry. Life group discussions are like cravings and feeding sessions. It's where you feast on what God is doing with each other, and you get hungry even more. Where are our life group leaders? Raise your hand if you're a life group leader. Yes. Yes. Our hunger drivers, <laughs> if you're not yet connected to one, approach our GIC <laughs> and join one. Let's be a church that stirs up each other's hunger for God. Let's be a church that stirs each other up to believe in God for the impossible. I'm so blessed by Chris. I don't know if, you, if Chris is here. Chris rode his electric scooter all the way from Guelph to Kitchener just to attend Life Group. That's hunger. That's hunger. <laughs> Ain't nothing going to stop me from joining Life Group. I, he's our poster boy for Life Group. Chris, passion and commitment. That's hunger right there. Let's pray. We hope that message was a blessing to you. And if it was, feel free to share it on your social media platforms and bless your friends and family with it. And we also want to hear from you. So fill out the connect card that's found on the description box below and we'd love to connect with you. Also, follow us on Facebook at Champion Life Center Guelph to stay updated for the latest activities. Until next time, God, God bless. bless you.